IO5. Um, uh, my presentation will be more about methodology, about how we did it, and what we did it will be discussed in separate uh, presentations by myself included, by, but by our team, because th that was the main part, the core part of the ELSA project. So uh, we uh, had to um, divide the work between us because that was uh, was indispensable if we wanted to complete the this part of the uh, ILSA project. So what were our aims in the intellectual output five, which is this part of the project? Our aim was to the development of training materials for the new ILSA course. So now that we had the structure, which Isabel showed you, we had to fill in with materials. And uh, a number of tasks had to be completed uh, in order to do that. And you can see these tasks on, on the slide here. And first of all, we needed to find a suitable online platform to host our materials. Uh, and that was very important for many reasons uh, because we needed to have um, a platform which was accessible uh, for persons with uh, various disabilities and we wanted it to be easy to use and also to guarantee project sustainability, so long-term availability. And I think we scored pretty well on all of these um, skills, so to say. Then, of course, and that was uh, the job that we really needed to cooperate between us, uh, we needed to prepare all the course materials, uh, which was a tough job, and I'll illustrate some of the types of materials that we had to prepare. In addition to our materials, like core course materials, we also had many case study videos, uh, practice videos, so videos that would allow future interlingual re-speakers to practice their skills. Uh, we also had a number of interviews for this course, uh, carried out for this course, and uh, we also made sure, or at least we are in the process of uh, making sure that the course is accessible. So, uh, course platform, uh, we opted for a platform which is called Campus Domar, uh, and this is a platform hosted by Universidad de Vigo, so our main partner, which, of course, uh, needless to say, guarantees its sustainability. It won't disappear after a year or two, so you will be able to access this, um, this uh, platform. It's based on Open edX engine, which is great because edX is committed to accessibility. It is regularly updated, so no need to worry that in two years' time the, mm, the engine will disappear. It's highly unlikely that this will ever come to pass. And it has a variety of options uh, which allow us to host many m different types of materials, which I will show you in a second. And also, if you look at uh, EDX's uh, website, you will see that EDX is really committed to accessibility. Uh, personally, for myself, that was very important. But for all of us within the project team, that was an important thing to keep in mind. So um, many of you have been asking, when will the course be available? And it's still not available but you will be able to see some of uh, the screenshots I'm, I prepared for you. So this is the course main page, and you can see on the left-hand uh, side, you can see uh, the list of modules, uh, as Isabel explained. So this list, uh, th there is a list of modules that you can access. And now coming to the specific materials that we had in uh, in the course. Now, this is something I really discovered, uh, uh, an additional benefit of having a transcript. So I told you that our course, we had in our mind uh, making it as accessible as possible. And I was thinking such a pity that I couldn't show you the video, 
but on the right hand side you can see that video transcript so every video in our course comes with this transcript and if you didn't have enough of your subtitles for this course you can see that uh, at the bottom of this YouTube um, uh, widget you can also see uh, subtitles displaying. So you can access the transcript which you can download and review but you can also ask, uh, you can also access um, subtitles directly from the YouTube clip. And by the way uh, the YouTube ILSA channel is already there so all our videos are already accessible uh, and available for you. And that's one type of activities that we've planned. So video lectures, and we have got plenty of quizzes. The platform allowed us to um, produce many of them, and we took that opportunity. So you can see uh, here a single choice uh, question quiz, uh, which is one of the option. Uh, I didn't mark any answer, but you uh, you could check if my answer was correct or not. So you can see that in the uh, bottom right corner there is this show answer button. So so you can uh, uh, these tests are scored. Another type of quiz: uh, multiple choice questions and. Uh, those of you who are into subtitling can definitely see if my answers are correct. And uh, at the bottom of this page, you can also see that uh, you can have an open question uh, and you can type the answer. And let me move on to another slide so that you cannot check if my answers are correct or not. <laughs> Uh, another type of materials are video tutorials, so basically this is the same as video lectures in its form but not in its content. So by video tutorials we mean all these uh, videos that relate to <clears throat> subtitling software and uh, all the other types of software that is needed for um, doing uh, re-speaking in the TV and for live events and in education. So we have plenty of these uh, tutorials uh, where again you are guided by voice uh, but also you are guided uh, by subtitles if you can't use the voice. I think this one is delivered by Agnieszka Szarkowska if I'm not wrong. Uh, so this is an, another sort of major highlight for us in this course. Now uh, exercises, well there are many types of exercises but here you can see uh, a sample exercise. Uh, this is from, uh, uh, I believe it's from the intralingual respeaking module. So you've got concise instructions that will allow you to um, to practice on your own or within a group. Now uh, every uh, unit, every module is accompanied uh, with teacher's guide or trainer's guide um, and this is just a table of contents page from the trainer's guide so that you can get the overview of uh, what is featured in this training trainer's guide and you can also see that um, it won't uh, be too boring for you to read because it's only seven pages so I believe if if you are interested you can bear with that number of pages. Now what's more um, we had uh, as I mentioned, we had uh, many practice videos and um, video uh, and lecture and interviews. So these are stored on our um, Google Drive, uh, which is hosted by us, by University of Warsaw. And this is also a permanent account, so it won't disappear after a few months. 
and uh, you can see the list of languages in which these uh, videos are provided so it's English comma Dutch comma sorry French uh, Spanish Polish and uh, German uh, okay uh, and there are free levels uh, because those videos have been graded by uh, the members of our team uh, first uh, France and Luis prepared uh, the grading criteria and then we all sat down and graded our the, these videos graded into basic intermediate and advanced level videos and we also had interviews uh, with re speakers from Austria Belgium Italy and the US and uh, the, the total amount of these interviews exceeds two hours of original content for this course and I'm uh, th that's my last slide in fact so this is the scheme of the work that have been carried out for um, this unit uh, for this uh, for this um, IO but before I pass uh, the floor to Isabel uh, let me just point out that uh, that's not all what we have done for this uh, for this intellectual output because I mentioned that we were um, we had a accessibility audit and we are about to receive the results of this accessibility audit but we also um, streamlined the creation of subtitles so you saw those videos on YouTube with subtitles and uh, subtitling was produced uh, subtitles were produced really smoothly and uh, we had a dedicated um, team of subtitlers who helped us out uh, with that but on top of that uh, once we completed completed our course we invited the advisory board to share their opinions with us and we would like to thank to all those who shared their opinions with us and I think we managed to incorporate um, the gist of your opinions so it's been an adventure it took us some time uh, to produce all these materials and I hope that the course will be available as soon as possible and uh, we hope that you will enjoy the course as we enjoyed the work on it so that would be it from me I'll be happy to answer uh, your queries uh, but I would ask Isabel to read the, the questions out if that's fine thank you very much thank you thank you uh, there has been a question already but it was answered by Agnieszka the question was from Bar Bar uh, Thanks, Agnieszka. yes uh, does this course support non-european languages can I still join even um, when one language is not among the languages and Agnieszka said yes you can work from English into any language you wish um, and then, but I see that Aniska is very fast because she answers all <laughs> questions already. Um, That's what you call a teamwork. <laughs> you mentioned which uh, speech recognition systems you are to be used. Um, this is language dependent, mostly Dragon, but Newton for Polish. Okay, then uh, somebody says, uh, asks, does that mean it supports English to Japanese or Chinese too? Um, well most of our materials are in English so even if we if if you wanted to work into Japanese or Chinese there is no problem with that you have uh, practice videos in English all the video lectures and all the materials are in English uh, so I would say it's possible to to work in any language um, that into any language you want okay Thank you. Uh, Follow-up question, do you provide any guidance on the uh, speech recognition systems available and cons and pros for each of them? Uh, I believe we do have a list in, uh, in IO7, we do provide a list of um, speech recognition systems, so that will be probably dealt in the IO7 um, session or presentation but then we also discuss uh, those systems that we have major practice with 
So okay. we do we do give uh, hints on how to how to deal with them. Yes, and Miska already answered. This will be discussed in core components. So thank you. Any other question from the chat box? No. Okay. Uh, oh yes. Uh, With another question. How can I find those materials? Okay. Uh, there is a question about to, where to find the material uh, wash tech, but this will be soon available when the course is uh, uh, finished, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, uh, it will be widely distributed once it's it's finished, but you can already check already check out our YouTube um, account which is called, I believe, ILSA project. And, and you can see, you can watch all those films. OK, uh, next question. How much overlap is there between the ILSA course and the UVigo course? I believe, I'm afraid that's not a question for me to answer, because I don't mm -hmm. know the UVigo uh, course in detail. Something for Pablo, maybe? Pablo, will you chip in? Hi, it's Hayley. If Pabno's not here, I'm more than happy to answer. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so, overlap between the ILSA course and the UVigo course. Um, in terms of the actual style of the exercises, Catherine, because I know that you've done the UVigo course with me, um, the style of the exercises is very similar, but the actual videos that are used um, are different. There is a focus as well on quality assessment, which you've seen um, in the uh, UVigo course. But these things that are quite specific to the interlingual speaking modules, which you'll see later. Um, what we didn't go over in the UVigo course are things on media accessibility and live events, pre-recorded subtitling, and then live subtitling uh, for live events. So that's sort of where it comes together and where it parts, I'd say. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Heli. So even if you've been through the uh, UVGO course, it's still worthwhile taking our course. Mm 